You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is a tutorial on how one might destroy data by physically destroying a hard drive using common household tools. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. The Centre for Investigative Journalism is a pioneer in providing expert information security training services to journalists and journalistic institutions. To consult with an expert through the CIJ, or to arrange a CIJ training session, contact the address on screen. This video shows dangerous procedures using power tools. A mistake using them could result in injury or even death. Do not try this at home. If you choose to carry out the tasks shown in this video, you do so at your own risk. Furthermore, all of the techniques in this video will result in catastrophic loss of any data stored in the drive. If there is any data you want to keep on your drive, do not attempt these techniques. Before you watch this video, if you haven't already, we recommend you watch our overview video, Protecting Your Data, so that you understand everything that's going on. You can tap on the pop-up message now to access it. In previous videos, we've shown you how to securely erase data on your hard drive, but what if you still don't feel comfortable with it? What if the software didn't work? What if the drive malfunctioned and the data was not overwritten properly? How do you rule out any uncertainty? The best way to be absolutely certain that data cannot be recovered from your hard drive is the nuclear option, to physically annihilate it, to grind it down to dust and particles and scrap. If the drive doesn't exist anymore, nothing can be recovered from it. Famously, when it was working on the Snowden documents, the Guardian was forced to physically destroy its own hard drives in the basement of the newspaper's offices, while they were watched over by technical experts from the GCHQ. So this is a method that is employed by intelligence agencies, and it can be assumed that it is effective. There are many commercial companies that offer services for the destruction of hard drives. This often takes the form of degaussing, using a special machine to inundate your hard drive with large amounts of electromagnetic energy, instantaneously erasing all of the data magnetically stored on it and rendering it inoperable in the process. There are also hard drive shredding services which can smash your drive into small pieces or even into fine dust. These can be expensive and you may also not want to entrust a third party with drives that you would like to destroy. In this case, you may wish to perform a DIY physical destruction of your drive. There are some extraordinary methods for DIY destruction of hard drives, such as the use of thermite to completely incinerate the drive, even melting the metal components. This video demonstrates more obvious methods for destroying a hard drive using household power tools. Depending on the jurisdiction you live and work in, using the techniques depicted in this video may have legal implications. For instance, if data in your possession is subject to a criminal investigation or might constitute evidence in such an investigation, then physically destroying the media the data is on may be looked upon as an obstruction of justice under the laws of your country. If you are unsure about any legal risk you may incur by employing the techniques in this tutorial, you should seek the advice of a lawyer with an understanding of the law on the use of encryption. In this tutorial, we're going to use the following household tools. Protective goggles, a protective face mask, protective gloves, a set of screwdrivers, a set of pliers, an electric sander, an electric drill, a cook's blowtorch, a set of hammers, and a work surface that can sustain damage. We don't want to get the kitchen table damaged. Before a hard drive can be smashed, it has to be removed from the computer it is in. This can normally be done with a household screwdriver set. Some computers, such as Apple computers, use star-shaped screws, which are a little more tricky, but you can normally buy a cheap set of screwdrivers at the hardware store, which includes star-shaped bits. Removing the drive itself is normally just a matter of unscrewing some screws and pulling the drive out on a caddy. The procedure is different from computer to computer, so there is no one guide to it, but if you search for the name of your computer online, along with Remove Hard Drive, you can normally get either a video or a text guide to taking it out. Smashing an external hard drive is a bit less fuss, but you may wish to take it out of its plastic casing. There are lots of guides on the internet to how to do this for each brand of drive. Once we have the hard drive out of its computer and removed from its caddy, we can start to take the drive itself apart. 
Because we are going to destroy the drive, we don't have to worry about damaging the drive in the process of taking it apart. We start by carefully unscrewing all of the screws on the drive. Make sure to check under some of the stickers for hidden screws. Once the screws are removed, you can prise the drive open. Inside the drive we can see an array of components. We will slowly and carefully remove each of the components. Some more screws may need to be unscrewed in order to do this. Most hard drives have the same basic components in them. There is the hard drive platter, which is a metal disc, on which the data, made up of ones and zeros, is magnetically recorded. Some drives have more than one platter. There is the spindle, which is the component that keeps the platter in place and spins it at the right speed. There is a read-write arm, with a read-write head at its tip. This component moves the read-write head back and forth over the platter, so that it can read and write data to and from the platter. And there is the actuator, the component which controls the read-write arm. And then there is normally a circuit board. In general, you will want to destroy every component that is capable of storing data. This will begin with the platter, but on some drives there may be other components which also store data. So, as a general rule, if in doubt, you should destroy every component which looks as if it might be able to store data. Use common sense to identify those components. Solid mechanical components, such as the read-write arm, can be ignored, but you may want to destroy components on the circuit board which are unknown to you. In this tutorial we're going to destroy the spindle and the circuit board. We're about to get physical with our hard drive components, so now is a good time to don protective clothing to protect face and hands from fumes, flying pieces, or sparks. To begin with, we're going to use an electric sander on the surface of the spindle. It's important to hold the spindle down firmly with a pair of pliers to secure it in place. Firmly we press the sander onto the surface of the platter and move it around a few times. We now check the platter to make sure that the sander has left abrasions evenly over its surface. The platter should change from bright and reflective to a dull matte texture. If in doubt which side of the platter the data was stored on, flip the platter over and do both sides just to be sure. Sanding will probably have made the drive unrecoverable, but we have plenty more in store for this drive. The next stage of our destruction will use a drill to scour holes in the platter, removing large amounts of its matter and making it effectively unreadable. This is a potentially dangerous operation, so please don't try this at home. Because this is a DIY demo, we are using a brad point drill bit, but there may be more suitable drill bits for this task. Again, we make sure the platter is held down firmly using a pair of pliers or by securing it in another way. Now, we drill a hole in the platter, and then move several degrees around the platter and drill another hole, and continue in this fashion until we have removed a large amount of the platter's surface area. Holding the circuit board down firmly, we now also destroy the main components on the circuit board by drilling through them. In selecting what to drill, we target any component that looks significant on the circuit board. The platter is now well and truly mangled, but we're going to keep going. The next stage of the physical destruction is to use a blowtorch to expose the platter to high temperatures and to burn components on the circuit board. We're using a Cook's blowtorch used to brown creme brulees and to sear steaks, and available from kitchen appliance stores. Again, a blowtorch is potentially extremely dangerous, so don't try this at home. We light up the blowtorch and direct the flame over the scored surface of the platter, moving it slowly and lingering over each inch of the surface area, ensuring that every bit of the platter is exposed to a high temperature. We now use the blowtorch to burn the surface of the circuit board, passing it over each of the components slowly and allowing it to combust. We're doing this in a ventilated area and using a face mask to avoid inhaling the fumes. Inhaling the fumes from combusting components is dangerous. Once the components are burned, there is one more stage of destruction to go through. Using a hammer, we smash the circuit board up, inflicting as much damage as possible on its main components so that not only is it rendered non-functional, but is no longer intact. Once this is done, we use a pair of pliers to pull the circuit board apart piece by piece, until all that is left is small fragments. Also using a hammer, we smash the platter so that it is bent out of shape. Then we use our pliers to pull it apart, and mangle it as much as possible. Now we gather the wreckage of our drive together. We double check that every component that is capable of holding data has been thoroughly destroyed. 
and we decant the smashed components of the hard drive into a plastic bag and tie it off. Some thought must now be given to where to discard the smashed components. We may wish to subject them to further destructive processes, or we may wish to discard them in such a way that the different components are scattered far and wide, and can never be gathered together again. If you choose to discard destroyed hardware in this way, make sure to dispose of your hardware in a safe and environmentally friendly way. The hard drive is now physically destroyed. The prospects of recovering any data from it is next to nil. If physically destroying a hard drive seems a bit drastic to you, we have a number of videos on how to digitally erase data on Windows and Mac. Be sure to watch our overview video, Protecting Your Data, and then access our other videos from there. To get to it, click or tap on the pop-up message and select the video you want from the menu. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and co-workers. To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.